So ideation and idea team fit. So we'll, we'll briefly cover um, the ideation in the context of uh, team building, but we'll focus today on the team building still more. And tomorrow we'll focus on, the, on part two on the ideation, ideation phase. So on the team alignment perspective, it's important that uh, without yet uh, committing to any specific idea or if there's idea or several ideas on the table or markets, you should anyway have discussion about how you feel about the idea, the potential and the market and the people that we would be working on uh, that are associated with that market and the idea. So why do I or, or you do want to do what you do? Like what is the purpose of coming to this, uh, to this venture uh, and, 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 and getting these types of things in the table? What do you want to do? What do I want to do and why? So what, what's my driving um, motivation? So what do I do, what I don't want to do? Uh, looking to commit to one thing or be part of many things. So this is also like, are you wanting to really be a core co-founder and really put your blinds on and focus on everything that this company wants? Or are you more looking to kind of be involved with startups or potentially even more of them? Uh, so then you could be maybe an extended team member capacity rather than core co-founder. Um, your skills, what are you good at? What am I good at? Um, what can I do? What can I contribute? Um, am I a, a leader or a follower type of person? Do I feel comfortable of you know taking the torch and, and leading us forward, showing the way? Or I'm more of a, of a person who like to follow and at the same time it's valuable from the perspective of making sure that are we doing any mistakes are we you know dropping any balls along the way and, and so forth so, so because we are looking after the, the company as a whole but we need leadership we need uh, also someone to look after that not not too much of a mess is behind and not leading too far too fast um, and, uh, and the level of, uh, of responsibility. How much responsibility do I feel comfortable of carrying now in the future? Uh, because these are also to, uh, to define the types of roles uh, we should divide. And, uh, and oftentimes, sometimes, or not often, sometimes they can be these very big teams. Sometimes they, they can be five, six, people maybe in the, in the project that was done in the, in the university or something or in a hackathon there's just very big team already and there's a very appealing idea or a potential innovation out there and it can be hard to okay who should kind of be uh, taking the lead are we going to build like equal ownership to everyone with six people um, Usually with this type of conversations and discussions, it starts to shape up to, to what kind of uh, position should, should this actually uh, each of us go into. And, uh, and, and, and with enough discussion and then eventually through actual pro execution, for sure this uh, start to clarify pretty quickly. Um, Try to find a few things uh, to agree on. Shared base criteria in this case are uh, something like what is our like short-term uh, planned exit or long-term target. So are we planning to test do a do a quick product and test it, and if it works, we'll try to sell it and make a quick exit out of it, or are we going to after something really significant and for long-term um, target? So that's a clear, like, if you aim for short-term exit versus long-term target, um, it's, it's a totally different mindset also and an expectation level, of course. Solution to small problem that, that many have. So like, a, let's say, a MailChimp when it started a, a newsletter tool. Just a newsletter for 
for, for a small problem, but many have that problem? Or is it a big problem that only few have, like some really big customers, uh, companies have this specific problem? There may be, you know, a hundred in, in the world of, of them, or they may be maximum thousand, but each of them have this significant problem um, that, that, uh, that few have. Or it could be a very specific sub-segment of a certain disease that people have and how they can live with that disease uh, or, or these types of things. But it's important to kind of, these are yet not defining any of the market, it's not defining any of the ideas, but this is more of the individual's expectations of the types of journey and venture they would like to have and join and be part of. Consumer or for companies, so is it B2B, B2C, uh, is it for small, new, big one, certain uh, industry, uh, what are the main motivating drivers behind individuals, is it for money, for fun, for sustainability, world peace, personal ego, personal challenge, uh, these are all important uh, discussions to have for and, and figure out like different perspectives because the key to find the co-founder alignment is for the company. The core team founder is the company and the alignment in, in certain things and then uh, the balanced skill set on the other hand is, is the mix that, that, that uh, you should be looking for. And you should not try to aim for perfect or perfection, that's not the point of this. The point is to, to understand the, 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 these types of different elements to, to consider and look to. Are we aiming for local business, global, regional, small, big and so forth? Are we looking to create a new market? Are we creating something that didn't exist before? Or are we extending or dis disrupting existing market? Which can also lead to creating a new market. So in the case of uh, GrowVC, when we started, we did, were the first ones in 2009 to create equity crowdfunding platform. So the market didn't exist. There wasn't no such thing as online investing into startups um, as anybody without networks, without channels. Um, we, were, were, we worked several years to help create that market. And, uh, and uh, that's one, one type of thing that is also related to the market timing. Um, so, as, a, as an example for, the, for, this, uh, for this list, this was uh, actually my personal uh, list to, to what I was filtering ideas before landing to the idea that uh, became GrowVC and, and the team. And we have evolved a lot since, but this was um, the very big, the, the beginning. I didn't want to be involved with hardware because my past companies uh, had already been in hardware. I didn't want to anymore do anything hardware related. So building a physical product, uh, it wasn't, was that it needs to be a global problem, nothing just locally. Um, I didn't want to have a setup that gets limited to a certain location and also uh, this and this was one of the hardest parts actually that you can see where it ends in many cases you can invent with many products or many ideas you can kind of predict the the life cycle of where that would end so so to fulfill something that there's enough work to be done enough products and service and versions to be done uh, that, that it's uh, it, it's hard, it, it can be seen where it ends. And for me personally, having been a, a serial entrepreneur for so long, I didn't anymore more want to have something where I need to have an exit through a sale of a company. I can have a personal exit from the structure and, and, and so forth, but I didn't want to build something just to sell it. Um, as a whole company, as the only target. And, uh, and all of these things have then gone into also uh, aligned with the co-founders that, that uh, 
we share this the same type of uh, thinking and then we have evolved how how that actually is is existing in, in our structures these days. So the key things to focus on on building then for a company as a tool set. And this is part of the team building, this is part of defining the company itself. So mission, vision and strategy. So first of all, uh, extending from the cultural perspective and extending from the, the expectations of the co-founders is to define what is the reason why the company exists. So basically, why does the company need to exist? Why isn't all the other companies already out there delivering and providing these types of things? Whether it's, it's coming from your personal or collective personal team member views, whether it comes from the, the, the customer pain, which is a much better uh, starting point from the business perspective. But at the end of the day, it's the way to find a way to communicate what is your beliefs, what is your uh, differentiated factor. Why does this company need to be built? And then it's about how. How is this company operating? How is it delivering? What is delivering? Um, so this is more practical things. So why do we do what we do? How do we do it? And then ultimately, what do we provide? This what do we provide keeps changing over time. So if you only start with the product or service, then, then that will not sustain time. Or that may be a plan if you're just looking to do a short, quick exit type of plan uh, where you build that first product, get it really working and growing, and then you sell that product into a company who wants to have that product or service in their offering. So that's a good exit, exit strategy. So your why statement is, is really why your company exists, uh, what is the purpose, and um, what do you want the company to be remembered from? Like if people think about your company, what, do, what should they be thinking about? The product or the company or the, or the, the beliefs of the company or the, the beliefs and ambitions of the co-founders? What? Because you need to be rememberable. If you are not rememberable, then, then, then that is also difficult to make your business known. If nobody cares why you exist, it's just one of the many. There's nothing unique about them. The mission part is then about the how, more about the how. So this is what you want to be known from all the time. Not just to be remembered from, but what you need to be known from, what do they do? So basically, what does the company do? And how do they do it? Then? So simple and memorable, short, limit to three to four main things, and uh, really operative. So it should help to drive action and initiatives. So really to answer, what does the company does and to who? When you answer to these two questions, you actually create a very powerful tool because it also tells all the other things that you will not do. And so sometimes that is the big problem is that there is no built-in answer to whether we should respond to that or whether we should respond to that. If you know what, you, what the company is supposed to be doing and to whom, then you know pretty quickly the answer whether that's relevant or not. But if you don't have this, then it becomes a guessing game and it becomes a, a long discussion with founders repeatedly when you don't have this simple guideline uh, as, a, as a mission. It's, it's needed also to align motivators. So you need to make sure that all of the founders agree on this aligned mission. What do we do for whom? And you should iterate it together and make sure that's 
the, the thing because that's what everybody's passions should be aligned. Why do you want to start the company? You should be wanting to do that to those people, those customers. The clearer the vision is, the bigger the vision can also be, and the easier it is to also see what the vision of, of, of us with these beliefs, executing this mission, how does the vision look like? The great mission is future-proofed and drives relevant new ideas and products to be explored and validated over time instead of being stuck with the product. So the famous Kodak example was that it should have been enabling the world to capture and save moments in pictures instead of making film and cameras. So once the film and cameras went away or they merged into totally different other products, even the Kodak was the creator, the inventor of the digital camera. They, they dismissed it as it's not clearly as good as, as the film and, can, and, and, and so forth. So this is just an example. The, the mission statement could even be better than that. This is just to highlight the, the point. So if everyone is in a different mission, if one is going to scuba diving, one is looking to go to the moon, and one just wants to go racing, then it's very difficult to imagine you having the same type of journey together. So make sure that you are going on the same mission and you are sticking with the same mission, whether that's climbing that mountain or whatever that may be, that's your choice. Some examples, here's a mission statement for financial services, helping customers and members to realize their financial dreams by providing guidance and tools they need. So with this statement, it's clear to see what they do and what they don't do. The bigger part here is you can imagine all the different things that they will never do. It's a university, extraordinary education, so they aim for better than average quality in an inspiring environment, how and by whom. They really want to have people who care about people learning and have inspiring environment. So they understand that, that a physical presence is very important for them. At the same time, this communicates a whole lot of things what they don't do. They're not going to provide financial services uh, and so forth, even if there would be money opportunity to do so. This is Startup Commons, scaling innovation entrepreneurship globally. So the essence is what innovation entrepreneurship and how is about scaling and to who is pretty much uh, anyone who we can reach to in a scope in a global media, in a scalable means all of the, the products the services the work everything is supporting this mission and the vision part while the mission gives daily guidance on what we do and what we don't do the vision gives direction and when there is no vision every direction is right and wrong at the same time there is no tool to measure and make decisions about our direction so it's a tool without vision you can't start moving forward because you don't know what forward is So you may find yourself in North, in the Lapland, even if you thought you were heading to California. And specifically, the alignment between team members here is key, because you need to make sure that you are all seeing yourself uh, heading and finding yourself in the same end goal. Once you have defined the vision, you can then plan and start heading towards that. And usually uh, the vision is not really considered as a vision, but just the next thing that you are heading to, uh, the next kind of milestone, the next thing that is on the table. And that's 
a milestone. That's not a vision. So really important to think of even 10 years is a short time. At the same time, it's very long time, then specifically with technology and uh, the change pace of uh, the pace of the change in the world. But at the same time, 10 years is quite short time. If you think Facebook in 10 years old, Google 10 years old, uh, and you think of them today, you think of Apple 10 years old, while they were still big, you can still see how, how, how they were on their journey. And this uh, child metaphor, a 10 year old child, doesn't take too long until, until that time passes. So far enough, but still imaginable enough. And this aligned perspective is very important that, that there should be a, clearly an aligned vision in place um, to evaluate whether the co-founders uh, alignment in this vision is, is clear. So if one of you sees yourself that you are heading to the clearly a different vision, a different direction, then for sure you will separate along the way at some point, or you're trying to sell the other person or persons with your own, own vision. And that's not a, a good foundation uh, for the journey. <clears throat> uh, general observations about missions, usually they are set too low. Uh, they are not clear enough, so overly vague, um, too short term, so more like a milestone, so not really looking far enough. Usually doesn't take into account competition factor over time, so expecting that the market doesn't change during the 10 years. Uh, so basically uh, expecting that we can be the only one Pretty much, the, there's nothing there now, and we have all the time in the world to build into that position. Uh, doesn't take into account in, in enough external factors, so the things that happen during the time or that can be expected to happen, uh, likely things to happen, market changes, mega trends, uh, financial turmoil, and these are all the types of things that, with more experience. Uh, it's easier to, to, to know these things exist, having gone through these journeys before. Um, at the same time, these are ex exactly the types of tools and values that uh, why they are so powerful when getting them uh, right at the foundational level. Oftentimes, there's nothing in between. So even if there's a good vision, then there's the milestones are not considered. And then the market timing may be totally missing. So the vision may communicate things expecting uh, different types of market timing. And, uh, and, and that's, that's something to really check against as well. Not easy for sure. It's one of the hardest part, even for the most experienced ones. But it doesn't make it so that you shouldn't try to do it and get other, other people's perspectives on the timing. Uh, with your vision and mission as well. So while mission is ongoing, framing actions of today and tomorrow, vision defines directions and can also include more measurable targets. Like mission, the bigger the ambition, the bigger the vision should be to communicate the ambition. Remember, to the, in, the, in the defining a startup, the ambition and the scalability are the factors defining whether it's a startup moving to a scale-up or whether it's an, uh, a small business or SME. In theory, this vision should be achievable, and but it, at the same time, it doesn't necessarily um, need to mean that you will be successful in that. Because uh, this vision, anyway, will drive your progress, decision-making, planning, evaluated, and measured. Measurement. Um, as, so as a tool, the bigger the vision, the better it works, because it drives, it's, it's aligned with the ambition level, 
and, and the vision drives the logic of how you approach, how you can execute things, how you can plan things, how you need to grow the team, what type of resources are needed and so forth. The smaller the vision, the less rational there is for any, any significant amount of people or resources to join your venture. It's simply that those would be over-resourcing compared to the, to the vision that you have. So as a tool, the bigger works better. Like think about any of the companies that you know and their visions. Are they attractive if they have moderate visions or are they more inspiring and attractive when they have bigger ones? Again, it's separate thing then how that will materialize and, and so forth. So don't limit your vision based on the resources you have. In the beginning, by default, you most likely don't have any resources anyway. And you have to become uh, capable as a team to learn how to acquire resources along the way. So again, no reason to limit the vision. So you anyway need to build and improve everything along the way. So some other characteristics, uh, the vision, it should be future casting, looking at the future, talking about the future. It should be clear, invisible, so that you can you can communicate in such a way that people can, in their minds, envision it. Think big, make it descriptive, and iterate, iterate. Don't necessarily change the vision itself, but you can change how you communicate it, how you write it down. You can look at it, you can think, is this, is this communicating it the right way? And that should happen. But in the essence of that vision usually doesn't change too much. Um, you can then have different types, you can make it more quantitative. So if you want to have more numeric, numeric perspective, you can have that. Uh, you can have it more competitive so that it's easier to measure. Who has the biggest market share? Uh, how are we gaining market share? Uh, are we in progress of being in the top number one with our market share? and so forth. And it can be combining these things, depending again a little bit of the market, the business and the development phase, what type of elements do you need so that the tool, vision as a tool works as effectively for the purpose that you are using it depending on the development phase. So think of world 10 years from now, Think of uh, how a news headline or cover story about your company could look like 10 years from now, how it looks, what it says, and then refine it and make it really actionable, understandable, clear to the point. This is more of a mission combined with the vision that there is a cure from a, from a breast cancer as one. Well. Could be anything. Uh, so it's not about being realistic about achieving the vision in short term. It's not about um, uh, if you imagine the big vision from the past, from building pyramids uh, or putting man in the moon or curing from AIDS, none of those what people would say, oh, but that's too big of a vision. Not attractive, not appealing, not important, not valuable. If you make something that people see that, oh, that's great, that's grand. If, that would, if that's successful, then that's quite a, quite a thing to achieve. That attracts attention, that attracts dialogue, that attracts resources, that attracts people. And it acts as a tool and a guideline to really to drive the decisions. And then the purpose of the milestones is to really help break down that vision into more practical steps. So whatever vision you set, it will guide you. While moderate vision may feel easier and more realistic and that you, it's hard to communicate such a big vision, 
it's hard to believe in it, it's hard to get others to believe in it, but at the same time, if you make it moderate, less people actually care. It's more about business as usual, more about traditional business. Nothing wrong with that as such, but then it doesn't com communicate the ambition level, it doesn't communicate your drive to find the scalability to get there. So the bigger vision will force you to design and test models that are also going to require scalability. And even if you don't reach that goal, then you can still achieve more than just having moderate milestone and achieving it. Because you are making progress and you are achieving these milestones and progress anyway along the way. So it's really a tool to inspire and help you to drive the company forward along any other ways. And it's definitely to attract resources and other people to join. So those who share the vision that they see, they would like to be part of that journey, that they have something to contribute, they have ideas how to get there, uh, it gives them room to do so. If the, if the vision is small, it's very hard to see that, well, they probably are going to make it, they already have all the resources needed, so what could I do, even if it's interesting? At the same time, it's important to avoid tunnel vision. So this goes to the point that, that you should look at what's happening in the market, you should look at what, what's happening in the, in the market, uh, competition and so forth and not just blindly follow the light uh, because it may be train coming at you at the other end and not, not the exit of the tunnel. So it's important to, to navigate with the help of the vision but not create it so that there wouldn't be other world existing. At the same time, it's important to see if the vision is bright enough. So does it sign to other people? Can you be separated from the crowd of other companies, other founders in the, in the event? Is it attractive? Is it appealing? And if you think in the bigger context, in the global scale, and if, if you go to a place where you know, there's tons and tons of ideas all the time, how do you separate yourself is the vision clearly, along with the mission uh, together. So these are very core tools and they last time and, and uh, they guide uh, the decision making, they guide uh, those who join and so forth. Then to avoid that tunnel vision and, and creating that kind of linear mindset, you need to have a strategy playbook as well. So the top level strategy is really about the how guidelines. It's a framework for the how. So in any given moment, the, our core playbook is this. So how do you handle obstacles, challenges, unknown factors, competitors? Whether that's team meeting, whether that's uh, building agile practices on product development, Whatever those are, uh, you should have the key strategy outlined. How are we climbing to that mountain? How are we navigating that unknown? What is our key playbook here? So strategy is not answer to everything, but it's one of the tools that frame your actions. So now you have culture that helps divide your values and the types of actions you can take and check. And then you can have strategy of, okay, if we use this approach, would this be applicable here? Or if you would that approach, would that be applicable? And this all happened in the context of the journey from today towards the vision and inside the mission to whom you are catering for and uh, what value are you creating them for? So, you need mission and vision in place to help create your strategy. So your strategy is your top level policy 
operations framework to help you reach your vision while staying true to your mission. So when you hear someone says, oh, they're on the mission to, you know, go to the moon, like, uh, no, Elon Musk, they're in the mission to colonize Mars. You know that they, they uh, uh, that's how it's being communicated. It's very strong, it's very clear, it's very uh, inspiring. And if you follow their actions, if you follow their strategies, if you follow their playbook, they are actually on the mission to accomplish that. Whether they will is a separate topic. What they are able to acquire and accomplish while they are on that mission, all of the things that they have done so far has been already hugely beneficial and useful. Like being able to build uh, rockets that can land back to the world and making the, the cost of rockets and launching stuff to the space 10 times more efficient, if not even more. So you get the sense of dedication, commitment, and so forth. So to summarize the mission, vision, and strategy, with vision and mission, it gives you focus. Without vision, you can't create a good strategy to get there. With good vision, when vision is clear, big descript descripting and measurable enough, uh, it guides you and gives you uh, ability to, to check your progress. Mission should be flexible enough to last time, so it should not be, the mission should not be the built to product, the mission should not be about the service that you are creating, the mission should be we're on the mission to uh, deliver this value for our customers and we keep doing it better and faster and more with better products, better services, for as long as the customer base exists. And there you have to choose. So example, uh, the, the example of uh, listening to the music has been out there for many times, whether it's been radio to C cassettes, to CD players, to, to MP3 players, to the to the current models of, of uh, iTunes stores and the streaming services. It's about delivering best music listening experience would be the, the mission. So clearly defined vision, mission strategy help you and everyone in your team independently to evaluate and decide on opportunities and ideas along the way. So if these are clearly existing as a toolkit for everyone, as the organization grows and there are those independently motivated entrepreneurial people joining, you know, the one thousandth of employee or, or tens of thousands of employee, if they can track and see where the company has been, the vision where it's heading, and they know these core principles, they can pretty quickly learn how everything connects and relates to each other and come up with their own productivity ideas on how to, how to help make progress. So to decide on simple things like, does this action actually take us closer or further from accomplishing our vision? Are these actions that we are doing now or those that we are considering, do they actually belong into our mission? Like, are these somehow relevant to our customers and the value that we're delivering to them? Do they fit into the strategy or even the culture? Like, is this the way we should do it? Or is this uh, a, a usual or unusual way? And if it's unusual, should it be included in our strategy going forward? Does it fit into our values that we operate? So all of those are tools to help create the organization from talent to co-founding team to growing organization. And you can imagine if there is no such tool, how much of daily communication and how much of meetings and decisions and, and things are needed and how much of misunderstanding and communication can organization have without having a clear guiding principles. So about why, to how, and what. 
the journey itself. So the journey, of course, we have the beginning and we have the vision, and then we can create a plan to reach the vision. And this is all very, very simplified perspective, but reaching the vision, this is the reality that we need to find a way to manage. And this guiding big tools, simple words, very powerful tools, when they have enough description, does really help to navigate this unknown journey that is ahead of us. So strategy helps for sure, along with the other ones, but how to break it down. So now the milestones really come to play and to break it down to milestones, design it backwards, design key things for scalability and so forth. So basically the milestones should be, of course, you can think of them as years, you can think of them accomplishing like the first product out, the first hundred customers, the first hundred thousand revenue, the, the, the first thousand customers, the, the five first international markets, you can name what types of different milestones you, you are relevant. But also the other, other key aspects that you should check this from uh, the other perspective is like, okay, if this is our vision, then how, what do we need to accomplish, you know, half point? What needs to exist for this vision to be even remotely uh, realistic, even at theoretical level? So if you think the, the case Elon Musk and, and his, his, uh, his, um, how he has considered this, for example, is like to get the cars, the electric cars to work, they started from this roadster, the most expensive one to start kind of building customer base. But at the same time, they had to figure out the whole uh, battery uh, factory thing and also the charging thing. So they, they separated these different milestones that for the big reason to exist, they actually need to have this other independently relevant and useful things that, and that uh, are part of the, the bigger vision. The same on the, on, the, on the colonizing Mars or mission to Mars. You need to figure out the rackets first, drive the cost level significantly down to be able to do more validated testing and so forth. But these are just easy uh, case examples because they are so visible but in your own world, you don't need to have ambition levels that big, but it gives a perspective of how big they are and why the big visions are more powerful tools. So reverse engineering, and then once you have kind of double checked these milestones from both directions, then you can start to plan more operative actions and, and strategies and sub-strategies within the first milestones. How can you achieve the first milestones as fast and effectively as possible and from there forward how to achieve the second one. So and with these plans you can start take action and you can measure your progress uh, in context of vision and of course in context of the milestones as well. The new reality becomes a bit more manageable. It's still challenging. It doesn't make it easy, but now you have a way to communicate and you have a way to build these activities and structure in a way that is easier to also repeatedly communicate uh, between all parties involved. So it often becomes more like this, that once you actually start making progress and you start achieving those milestones, you start to actually oftentimes push the vision forward or you start to push the vision to some other direction. Because with milestone reads, you start to learn from the market, you learn from your team capabilities, you learn from the, the, the many things and you acquire resources and you acquire channels that gives you more room to be able to do more things. <clears throat> 